I don't want to speak in fear or in favor of anyone. I ask that you speak through me in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so today I brought myself, I am the message, I am the demonstration. So I don't have PowerPoints today. So I need you to just indulge me, all right? I'm very conscious of time, not the second, more than my allotted time. So please relax and stay with me. I need your attention. Can we do that together? Yeah, that's what I thought. Well done. So I'm going to be swapping my hats today. The Lord will be leading us. The Lord has already spoken to us to say that it's our season of manifestation. The title today is From Praise to Manifestation, From Praise to Manifestation, From Praise to Manifestation. And if you don't mind, very quickly join me as I jump into the book of Psalms. If you got a Bible, otherwise you can look at the screen and catch up. <laughs> so it's Psalms, we are in Psalms chapter 149, chapter 149, and I'll read the whole chapter. We are in the book of Psalms. Chapter 149, are you there? All right. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your maker. O people of Jerusalem, exalt your king. Praise his name with dancing and accompanied by tambourine and harp. For the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the faithful rejoice in this honor. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their mouths. And a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with shackles. I love that. To bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains to execute the judgment written against them. This is the glory of his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen and amen. Before we go very quickly into the message, I'm going to tell you a story and I'll make three quick points and I'll be out of your way. All right, so let's get it. So I'm going to swap hats. Don't say, oh, she's swapping hats on the altar. What kind of thing is this? Just indulge me, all right? Indulge me. Bear with me, okay? And just wait and, and we'll get into it very quickly. Just three quick points and I'll be out of your way. So I'm going to swap my hats because the story I'm about to tell, it started that day like this. All right, so bear with me. All right, so this is exactly how my story started that day because then I was, no, 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 not I was, I am still, you know, as this version of Chris Sisters, then they used to call SU. <laughs> okay, only, the, not everybody knows, but you know, those our days, uh, we used to wear a lot of barrettes like this. So anyway, so this is like a replica of, so this is exactly how my day started on this particular day. All right, so in the church, my parents' church, where um, we grew up and my family actually gave our lives, the whole family, the whole lot of us gave our lives to Christ in that mission. And we, we did our baptism, we did all the um, believers' classes and everything. We did that and, um, in that church. So by the time we had graduated all the believer classes and everything, and um, we were to join the department, I joined the choir. So I joined that choir, not, I wasn't the choir leader, I was just a floor member, I just joined, you know. And um, I wasn't the, the choir leader, I wasn't the assistant, I wasn't any member of the executive, I was just a floor member in the choir. So there was this particular occasion that was going to happen in the church. And the, um, the head of the choir said, ah, Sister Buki, well, they used to call us sisters a lot then. That's Sister Buki. Well, some people come, called me Buki too, so don't think that's about the story. It's not about what they come. So she, she was like, you are going to be leading praise and worship on the celebration night of the anniversary. Now, for the anniversary night, the GO, the, 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 the founder of that mission, was going to be around, and they had sent handbills out and got people in, and many people were already in there. You know, it was going to be a packed service. So he said, you are going to be leading prison worship. So I said, fine, it is well. So I, I took the attention, and then, it, they, they, and then they announced in the choir, they said, we are going to be wearing white on black. It's going to be white and black. 
and a heart. Bear in mind, for emphasis sake, a heart. He said, and you're going to be wearing black heart. All right? I've told my stories several in this church. I'm not even going to go through again. But the part I'm going to bring out is that my mom was raising the six of us. She had separated from my dad. My dad got the money, the houses, the cars, and everything. My mom got the six of us, nothing else. All right? So she was struggling to raise the six of us all by ourselves. So I was basically raised by a single mom. I was nine by the time my parents separated. They never got to, um, together anyways. So that's not the story today. So by the time they told us that in the church, in the choir, I couldn't summon the courage to go and tell my mom that he's struggling to feed six mouths and do school fees and do uh, transport fare for school that they had asked us in the choir to wear white and black and a hat. And bearing in mind, I was asked to lead the praise and worship. So you cannot even wear beret and hide behind so that the people wearing a fine hat will cover you. I was going to be leading praise and worship for that event. So what, what I did then, or what I usually did was school. I was also the head girl of the school. So you had to lead by example and all that, show up in time and all that. My academics were fine. I give God the glory to that. So what I did then was take, I would take transport, full transport to school so that I'm in time. I'm in school on time and all that, do the school work. Then after school, instead of taking full transportation back home, I will walk halfway so that I can save half of transport fare and gather it and use it to buy uniform. So I will walk halfway and use half of my transport fare together to get um, church uniform because I was not going to be a burden on anyone. Not that people will now say, ah, this sister that is required that never has uniform. So I will walk, that, that was it. So I had done that and gathered money to get the white and the black we were supposed to wear for that occasion. But my little savings, no wonder maybe I eventually studied economics, or savings and managing resources, I grew up with it. You will grow up, how to, you will know how to manage resources when there is not much, but it is also a life skill, and I thank God I learned it. I had saved and gotten that white and black. I was ready, but I was not ready. Because I needed a hat, and I did not have one. And the savings could not um, buy me one, and I was not going to tell my mom I needed a hat. So that day, I was supposed to lead praise and worship. I got fully dressed in my white and black, and all I had to cover my hair was a beret. And that is why I'm wearing that beret today. So this was me that day. And as I was wearing that beret, so many thoughts were coming into my mind. Can you see yourself? You cannot even afford simple hat, black hat. On ordinary heart, and then you are leading praise. Who are you to go and even stand in front of them? You will go and stand in front of a choir where everybody's good, everybody's got it together, everybody's got money, and then you are leading, and you don't even have anything but just a beret. So I bought that beret in my spirit, man. I started struggling. I, I could not find anything on my inside to go and stand in front of a church. The church was packed. It was full. The auditorium, a big church. Then in Loring. I got there that day, they started the service. The person that did opening prayer and all that and all that. The prayer, the service was going and going and going. You know what? And then the devil told me, haha, see? It's, not, it's going to be your time. But then that day, some of the choir members that showed up, a particular sister had come around and she brought extra hat, a black hat. And she said, oh, I brought a hat just in case somebody did not have and all that. And then they were like, oh, Bookie, since you are going to be in front of the choir, do you mind taking the extra hat so just for the sake of uniformity? Nothing, you know, your beret is good. You know how people will encourage you with your situation so that you won't feel Your beret is very fine, you know, but it's just that for the sake of uniformity, can you please wear this um, hat? So I took the borrowed hat, the borrowed black hat, and I took it. And as I sat down there, the enemy came back to me. He said, can you see? The sister that borrowed me the hat, I owned her the prof, the mom a doctor, see, see? Good parent, good family, everything working for her. And then see, you that you are going to lead praise and worship, there is nothing than a borrowed black hat. And that voice kept at me, and they were rounding up prayer, and it was getting to my tongue. So that day, I, where I was seated in the choir, I turned, and I told the devil, I said, devil, Listen, and listen good. You have never seen a believer in your life 
lead worship with a borrowed heart as I'm about to go to that stage and lead worship. I said, watch me, devil, watch me. So I, that, by the time I said that, I told God, so I, I put the devil on the left. I said, God, you have never seen a Christian worship you. You see, I am supposed to be leading praise and worship. But as, my, as many as these people are in this church, I guarantee you, God, I have done all the rehearsals. I'm conscious of the technicalities of my songs. I have the lineup and everything. But I guarantee you, God, if they choose the whole lot of them not to praise you in this borrowed heart, and this uniform that I have labored for, even though somebody should, my parents could have easily provided it for me, but nobody provided Ah. God, you have never seen a believer praise you in a borrowed heart. I put God on the right. I drew the battle line between both of them. Devil here, God here. Hmm. I went to the stage. They gave me a microphone. By the time I took the microphone, and that is where I want to begin to challenge your praise in 2024. By the time I took the microphone, bet it, I was there. I took the microphone. My worship in my hand that day was my weapon of warfare. It was not what I was going to do to form posh. I was not going to be impressing the choir leader that asked me to lead praise and worship. My worship was not going to be about the instrumentalist. My worship was not going to be about who was going to be impressed in the church. Oh, this sister is fine. Oh, no, she's not even fine. It, it was not going to be about anything. I took that microphone in their hands and I started worshipping because my worship was my weapon. It was my weapon of warfare. I was telling the devil, devil, watch it. Devil, watch me, watch me, devil. The voice, the generational causes that say I will not make it. The generational causes that say I will not amount to anything. Listen and listen good. I started worshipping. The church caught fire. The presence of the Lord came down. It was a mighty it was a mighty, mighty, mighty session. I give God the glory for that. By the time that was done, I went back to my choir seat with my borrowed hat, sat down there waiting for the service to be over so that I can return the borrowed hat and wear my beret home. By the time I sat down, by the time I sat down, one of the ushers came and tapped me. He said, Buki, mommy is calling you in the office. That's the general of Asia's wife. She had come from Lagos for the occasion. She said, mommy is calling you in the office. So I got up. I said, in my mind, I was thinking, what did I do wrong? Lord, have mercy on my soul. I looked at myself, hey, Toto, I wore uniform, I wore a hat, the borrowed hat. So I was like, maybe it was a mistake. By the time I talked to her, she would say, maybe it wasn't me. I went. By the time I got to her, ha, she said, she, I, as I entered, she said, ah, Buki, when I was leaving Lagos, God told me to bring you a hat. She said, God told me to bring you a heart. I can even start crying right now. My voice is breaking. She said, take off that heart from your head. It was a borrowed heart. I have come to speak with somebody today. What you have right now is a borrowed idea. It's a borrowed house. You are still living in somebody's house. You are still working in somebody else's office. But the God, our God, is the God that changes story on the altar of praise. I have come to challenge somebody's praise and worship. Your worship life this year. She said, take off that heart. I took the borrowed heart. Black, all black. I took it off. She took the heart that she had brought. It was a designer's heart. The color combination of the heart. Oh my God, I still have the heart today. She said, kneel down. I knelt down. It, and she said, kneel down, not because she wanted to punish me. She, she wanted to decorate. She wanted to wear me the heart by herself. She, she, she placed the heart on my head. Styled it. I brought this one as a good example. This one I got from Australia. An Australian designer made this. So it's a good example of that designer's heart. She styled this on my head as I was kneeling down. And she started praying. And she started blessing me. And she started praying for me. You see, one thing that you do not know is that I have always secretly admired her spirit life. I've always admired her as a woman in ministry. When it comes to prayer, when this woman leads, fire. When it comes to worship, when she leads, fire. When she preaches, fire. In her career, fire. So I've always admired her and desired the grace of God upon her life. So when she gave me a heart, she did not just give me a heart. She, I got a mantle. 
I got a mantle. I have come to make the first point today. Just three points and I'm out of your way for good. The first point is that your praise will sample you out. Amen. My, the praise that they sampled me out. I was not the only. It was the mass choir. But I was the only one that was called. And I was the only one that was called because I gave my God my painful praise. I have come to challenge you this year. You have kept quiet for too long. The enemy of your life has intimidated you for too long. He has given you enough reasons to keep quiet. And you have collected those reasons and kept quiet. He will give you this one. You will keep quiet. Give I was almost asking somebody else to lead that day. But I said no. I will go in my borrowed heart. I have come to tell somebody today. You may have lost that job. If you will praise your God. If you will make a sacrifice sacrifice of praise. If you will worship your God, you will be sampled out. In that office, you will be sent for. In that office, they will call out for you. Your name will be announced. When you thought that nobody saw you. Ah! Hey! hey. When I got up, ah! I said, devil! It's time for a rematch. All the things you said before I went to stay to lead praise. Ah! Oh yeah, now. What did, you, what did you say? How do you like me now? My steps changed. I grew like 20 inches on the day. By the time I was walking out of that office with my, with my designer's hat, ha! I said, devil, see the person that doesn't still have a father but has a heart. See the person whose mom can still not afford the one but has a heart. See the person who does not have the connection but God is speaking for. See the person who does not know what to do but God is showing the next steps. See the person that does not know the person that is right but God is making a way. How do you like me now devil? Now talk, now talk, 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 talk. What did you say? He went mute because what? God, guess what? The second point, God will fight for you. God will go on errands on your case if you we worship your God. If you will say God this year, it is not about what I have. It is not about who I am. It is not about who I know. As you stay in worship, in spite of the voices, as you stay in worship, in spite of the things you don't have, as you stay in worship, in spite of the things that you have, watch God rewrite the story. Watch God begin to tell somebody. She was in Lagos. She didn't know my situation. She didn't even know I borrowed the heart I was leading praise in. She was somewhere else. The Lord will cause a global uproar on your behalf. People that you do not know and people that you have never met will begin to serve you before they meet you, before they leave their house. God will begin to speak on your behalf. She said, I brought you a heart. I didn't tell her about what I did not have. But the God that I serve knows what I don't have. Ah! He sees. He knows. He hears. He feels. He is God all by himself. Guess what? He, God can add color to that ordinary situation. Maybe you started 2023 and ended it with, a, with an ordinary thing. I'm not talking down on berets. I still wear them. So, but I'm just using it as an example. Maybe it was ordinary, but the God of heaven is about to decorate your life. The God of heaven is about to change your story. The God of heaven is about to rewrite that story. Only stay in the place of praise. It may be painful, but it repositions. Praise! It repositions. It puts you in the right spot for the right miracle. It puts you in the right spot to be heard by the right person. It puts you in the right dimension. It connects you when you don't have any connection. Praise! Repositions for manifestation. That is the final point. And in praise, when you stay in praise, God doesn't just reposition you. He decorates. Ah! I am not saying it just because it is written in the Bible. I am saying it because I am the living example. Because you don't want to know the me that walked back into that church with a designer's heart. Ah, I was like, God. <laughs> they were like, ah, you have, you have eyes. Ah, I was like, eh, check me out. You know how you will be adjusting when there is no photographer in town? <laughs> I started adjusting, you know, eh, hey, 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 God, he has done me well. You know how your voice will even change when God has visited you. 
ah, God is about to rewrite his story. God is about to do somebody good. God is about to change that dimension for you. Rise, church of God, and begin to praise. Rise, church of God. Say, God, this is my year. Anoint me with the spirit of worship. God, change me in the place of worship. Change me in the place of worship. Pray, change my praise. It may be painful. Give me the grace. It may be painful. I may be crying through it, but God help me. Are you giving God the glory in this house and asking for the anointing, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the praise that is beyond who is watching, the praise that is beyond who is looking, the praise that is beyond what someone else is wearing. Lord, that is my praise in this year in the name of Jesus. Lord, that is my testimony.